Minasan, Ohio. Today we are in the garden and we will be harvesting our fall sweet potatoes. These are the hills um, directly above our community garden in which we have a, um, a few small plots. We work with um, several other neighbors and this area here you can hear the insects, the birds, the crows. I'm, I'm really quite fortunate in where I live to be surrounded by such an abundance of nature and just green spaces. It really is nice to come out and hear the sounds of what I hope is a healthy ecosystem, but birds chirping, insects buzzing, and it really is a good backdrop to working in the garden, which we shall start soon. Now this is our plot. It's about a meter wide and it's about five or six meters deep, meters long, and these are the leaves of our sweet potato patch. If you're unfamiliar with sweet potatoes or satsumaimo, they grow a large amount of leaves. They're a very robust vegetable to grow. These, these leaves just soak up sunlight and they also, they keep the ground beneath a bit moist because um, the sunlight just doesn't quite penetrate enough to the ground to really dry it out. And you, you end up seeing that beneath the leaves there's all kinds of just insects that make, you know, their home in, in the shade from the, the hot summer, Japanese summer sun, which can be pretty brutal. Um, you might be able to see also a lot of the leaves have been eaten by most likely grasshoppers, but, um, you know, these are our sweet potatoes. Um, very easy plant to grow, or vegetable to grow, I should say. We get a lot of typhoons, and they hold up very well during those kind of um, weather events. Now, before venturing into the garden, we need our trusty mosquito coil, Katorisenko. This incense is a very old-fashioned way of keeping the mosquitoes at bay, but it still works quite well. It goes in this little um, coil here, this little metal case, and you hang it from your belt, and the smoke scares away the mosquitoes. Now, I've rolled away those, um, that large amount of leaves that we saw earlier. Now you can see the, um, the tips of the sweet potatoes protruding from the soil. Now, if the soil was better, if it was a softer soil, you can actually pull the potatoes out with the leaves, but this soil, um, as I'll discuss more later, it's, it's almost a chalky kind of clay mixture, and you can't pull the potatoes out without, basically the, the stems will break, and you can even snap the potato in half. So this makes it a bit difficult. You really need to dig around the potatoes or, um, you know, again, that, that, that soil just, it just sucks them in there, like, almost like concrete. And actually, in a way, working with such poor soil has been a bit of a, a blessing as much as a curse. I've actually um, had to learn about rebuilding soil and reconditioning it and building healthy soil. Um, I'll speak about this a bit later in the video, but um, as much as I would love loose, just beautiful, dark soil, um, having to grow things in soil that's not quite the best has really, you know, taught me a lot about, you know, quite a, uh, an important aspect of gardening that some people may not need to always deal with depending on the quality of their soil, and that's, you know, adding nutrients to it, adding, um, you know, biomass, you know, in the, in the way of, you know, either, um, you know, crushed leaves or manure as we do. So, 
Um, this soil is a bit of a hassle, but um, it's also been a learning process as well. And here we are with our final haul of sweet potatoes. These are fresh out of the ground, so they're still covered in a bit of dirt. I've tried to brush them off, but like I said, that, that kind of clay texture to the soil makes it really sticky and it sort of sticks to them. But I was quite happy with this year's um, harvest. We got about a good 40 potatoes there. You see that one's about the size of my hand and some of them are damaged, but you can work around that. But yeah, this is, this was f for the small area we have. Um, this was not a bad, not a bad haul. We'll be eating and cooking with these for, you know, all the way into at least Christmas, possibly New Year's and, and a little bit after. That's the other thing. Sweet potatoes store very well. You just keep them in a box in a cool, dark place, and they just, they last. Um, they're excellent. And here we are. Um, they're ready to be brought inside. I left them outside overnight to dry. And I've been told by my neighbors that if you leave them for a week or so before eating, they actually get sweeter. Um, so yeah, this is again about I want to say seven or eight kilos, if not more. It's a good you know um, ten, twelve pounds for quite an easy bit of work and maintenance. So yeah, these our are our sweet potatoes. So these are two that I um, went ahead and washed just to kind of show you that up close. These came out, again, these are pretty big. This is the size of my hand here, so I was really happy with um, how many I got. Again, you saw earlier in the box, they weren't so pleasant to look at with all the dirt still on them. Um, so I did want to wash these and just give a bit of a look these are this is a bit of a smaller one but um, they got kind of damaged a little bit scratched up the soil here at least the soil where our garden is is really um, um, hard it's a kind of clay or chalk or mixture of it I guess I really I don't I don't know um, we do a lot of um, soil you know conditioning and, and trying to rebuild the soil me and the others who uh, share the community garden um, with us or together. Um, you know, we add manure. We get um, a lot of manure from, uh, there's a dairy in the next town over. And um, once uh, once every six months or so, they'll come and bring a little mini pickup truck full of manure. And they dump it in the corner and um, we go through all of it um, with the soil. But even then, um, you know, adding all that bio biological, you know, kind of organic matter to the soil, because there's so much of that kind of clay um, in it, it just compacts with the rain and gets real hard. So when you dig these out, they don't really come out of the ground so easily. And a lot of times they end up um, damaging the skin. But the thing is, even with, you know, these kind of blemishes on them, once you peel these, the meat meat flesh beneath is perfectly um, perfectly fine in fact you may have noticed in the other clip um, with the box a few of those potatoes had you know holes in them they had some damage from um, I believe insects had gotten to them and um, eaten uh, basically eaten a bit of of them but even when you cut those pieces away and peel them they're they're still um, completely edible and, and good for for cooking so yeah these sweet potatoes they again I mentioned this in my peppers video but I'm you know my my thought process on gardening is you know the maximum amount of calories for the least amount of work and nothing provides that more than sweet potatoes for the level of maintenance you have to do on these and the actual amount of food you get um, you know, the amount, the amount of calories you get for it is, the trade-off is just perfect to me. Um, as you saw earlier with the, the the large amount of leaves that go into making these, they're very robust. You know, other than some insects burrowing, burrowing, excuse me, burrowing beneath the soil and, you know, eating at the potato 
themselves that way. Other than that, they're very hardy, very robust, and really all they require is a bit of water and maybe some weeding every now and then, pulling out um, a few weeds. That's one of the, the, the issues we have with the, um, the manure. Basically, you know, the cows, as they're grazing, they swallow up all kinds of seeds and other, you know, parts of, of plants and grasses. So once the soil gets ready and you add in the manure with the soil, um, all of that, all of those seeds and so on just sprout right up. So that's a bit of a downside. You have to pull up a few weeds with these, but it really is an easy vegetable to grow and I make sure to do those, do so every year again um, the, just the amount of production you get from um, for, for what little work has to go into it they're very easy planting these um, I should make a video next year during the planting uh, season planting sweet potatoes it's extremely easy it's basically a kind of almost like a branch or a stick with leaves on it there's a little bit of roots at the bottom, and you just sort of tuck it into the soil. It's um, If the soil's soft enough, you can just slide it right in. Very easy to plant. They grow very quickly. Um, they do well in um, you know, storms, heavy wind, heavy rain, high winds, which we get here a lot with the typhoons that pass through. Um, you know, whereas other things, tomatoes, cucumbers, could get damaged. These just do really well. So I'm a huge fan of sweet potatoes now. And this variety of sweet potato, um, I haven't had many others. They're not, they are sweet, um, but not nearly as much as like a yam, for instance. They have a bit of sweetness to them, but um, it's very subtle. It's, I, I really like them. And the amount of recipes you can do with them is just, uh, it's, there's so many good things. Um, for example, one this large, I'll probably make um, some baked potato wedges with this basically you peel it slice it into uh, slice it into wedges um, drizzle some olive oil on it or basically put them in a bowl with olive oil salt and pepper mix them up so it's evenly coated and then um, I have a garlic press that I'll use and I'll press some um, a few cloves of garlic into that in, into the mix mix it again so that you get the, um, the fresh garlic stuck all over it and then they go in the oven for, I believe, 25 minutes at, um, it's 220 Celsius, which I believe is 425 um, Fahrenheit, I'm not sure. Very easy recipe. They come right out. Um, this baked baked sweet potato fries are great with ketchup. Um, I just, yeah, so I'll do that with those. With the smaller ones, um, if you saw in the box, there were some bigger ones, but I got there's a lot of tiny ones as well. Those are um, really good for potato soup, sweet potato soup. Again, something I'd never had before, but you simply peel them and then, um, you know, just like you're making mashed potatoes, you want to cut them into, you know, about that size, you know, golf ball size, I guess, and just boil them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and then you drain them and then you add some chicken stock and fresh cream and mash them up. We actually use an immersion blender. You stick that in there and uh, mix it up till it's real fine. And sweet potato soup. Cannot recommend it enough. Very easy recipe if you're ever looking for a fall um, um, kind of recipe that you may not have tried before. Please give sweet potato soup a try. Extremely easy. Just sweet potatoes, um, some kind of stock to add to it, um, chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever you know you have. Um, basically just get a bouillon cube of whatever flavor you like add it to, you know cook it in some water and then um, add some cream to it and mix it up um, I believe I'm trying to remember the exact recipe I think you uh, put some onions in there too to boil and they, they get they, they get simmered and soft with it I can't quite remember but absolutely delicious um, sweet potato soup and then sometimes um, Sometimes just slice them and fry them in a pan. They don't fry up qu quite as um, as easily as a, a regular potato. You can fry them, but um, I think it's the sugars in there. They kind of do something. They get a little bit crispier than normal. They're still good, but I, I prefer just to bake them, um, like I said, in the wedge fries or make um, into a potato uh, sweet potato soup. So yeah, I wanted to just share some of my sweet potatoes from the garden. These are. Um, 
not as pretty as what you would find in the supermarket. Those are, you know, just the bright pink purple color, um, no blemishes on them. Mine are a bit beat up, but again, they'll they'll eat just the same. So yeah, another. Um, just want to share some more from the garden that I've um, was able to get this fall season, my sweet potato harvest. So thank you guys. Um, thank you everyone. Hope you enjoyed. And matane.